Good morning and welcome to Grace Fellowship. I'm Pastor Keith Stevens. This is my Debbie sitting here with me. We have Shirley back here on the keyboard. and We have come to praise the Lord, to worship the Lord. Thank you for inviting us into your home. And we ask you to join in with us. You know, we love those old courses and we sing a lot of hymns. Today, I just want you to join with me and just, I believe what we're about to sing. Are you ready? Well, I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. His promise that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, it could happen any day. When God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just feel like something good is about to happen and brother this could be that very day sing it with me i just feel like something good is about to happen oh i just feel like something good is on its way he has promised that he'd open all of heaven and brother it could happen any day when God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus. And we look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be that. Just sing it one more time. I just know that something good is about to happen. I just know that something good is on its way. Has promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, it could happen any day when God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just know that something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be that very day. And I've got a river of life flowing out from me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. Oh, I've got a river of life flowing out from me. Spring up, oh well, within my soul. Spring up, oh well, and make me whole. Bring up the well and give to me that life abundantly. Oh, yes, I've got a river of life flowing out from me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. Oh, I've got a river of life flowing out from me spring up oh well within my soul spring up oh well and make me whole spring up oh well and give to me that life abundantly oh praise the lord folks there is a river of life within us. And as we share that love of Christ, and as we, as we reach out to touch people's lives, God honors that. God blesses that. Folks, we want to walk in the favor of God. We need to walk in His favor. Because there's none like Him. There's none that will bless you like Jesus. There's none that will strengthen you. There's none that will bring you the peace that only Jesus can bring. And if you don't have that peace, you may even know Jesus, but apparently you're not trusting Him. You're not walking in faith. You're not being faithful in your trust. Trust Him. Whatever your need may be, you can trust Him because there's none like Him. Let's take a moment to worship the Lord, would you? Join me as we just, just love on Him a minute. There is none like you. No one else can do. 
touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Lord, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. Oh, I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Sing it with me one more time, would you? Lord, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you. Oh, I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none like you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. God, there is none like you. And there's no one that we need more than you. As we sing this beautiful little song, God, I pray that you walk right into the homes, right into the hearts of everyone that sits under the screen of this song. It's your word, God. And I'm believing right now that whatever need is needed right now, God, we turn to you and trust you, whether it's a financial need, a physical need, a mental need, a need of peace, a need of joy, whatever that need may be, God, I pray right now as we sing this little song that you honor the words, that you receive, God, all the way up to your throne, the praise, the worship of your people. We love you, Jesus. And we're here to honor you and to give you that praise. Oh, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I need you more, more than yesterday. I need you more, more than words can say. I need you more than ever before I need you Lord I need you Lord I need you Lord more than yesterday I need you more more than words can say I need you more than ever before I need you, Lord, I need you, Lord, more than the air I breathe, more than the song I sing, more than the next heart more than anything, Lord, as time goes by, I'll be by your side. Cause I never want to go back to my old life. I need you more, more than yesterday. I need you more, more than words can say. I need you more. Than ever before, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you more. More than yesterday, I need you more. More than words can say, I need you more. 
than ever before. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Heavenly Father, this just really hasn't been a time like what we're facing now, at least in our lifetime. God, even though there's so much fear, it seems, there's so much worry, there's so much discouragement, depression. And God, I know things are tough. There's those that are walking now in such financial straits. Those right now, God, that are going through these physical trials, God, we know that you're here to walk with us. But God, we're brought to the attention of how much we need you. We need you more now, God, than maybe ever before. I pray right now, God, if there may be one out here that doesn't know you personally, that right now, God, that they can can overcome that fear. That fear can be replaced with hope. That fear can actually be replaced with the joy of the Lord. And I pray, God, that right now, in Jesus' name, those that are struggling, that you minister to them that you touch them. God, touch their hearts. Let them know how important it is to not know about you, but to know you. Love your people, God. And we're all your people. Even those that may not have met you, maybe not made their peace with you, you still love them, God. But you want to walk with them. You want to bring them the joy of the Lord, which will be their strength. We love you, God. We trust you as we worship you to bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. I've been looking forward to sharing this message with you. This is the second message in a series that I've entitled, When the Seatbelt Light Comes On. You that have your Bibles and like to look up 1 Kings chapter 17, but when looking ahead makes you fearful, we need to look back and remember. Because there's things we would have certainly forgotten, but there's things that we don't know, and there's things we would love to forget. But there are things that we can't afford to forget. Uncertainty has a way of focusing us so exclusively on the mystery of what lies before us that we forget what lies behind us. If you've been a Christian for any length of time, God's faithfulness to you in the past casts a light on your future. God's faithfulness to us in the past should shape our assurance and our perspective about the future. So when the fastened seatbelt light sign comes on, we got to remember that we're going to, and we're going to look at this. We're going to look at a life of a man who forgot. And, and you know this name, his name is Elijah. And in 1 Kings 17, and folks, I don't even know if you'd believe this, but in even Luke chapter 4, Jesus refers to these incidences as history. So I'm going to go with Jesus here. The context. Let me just share a little bit with you. The kingdom at that time was split. Instead of one nation, there was Israel and Judah. And when Israel had no godly king, not at all, God was going to send a prophet every time. And that was his mouthpiece. So when Ahab turned against God, the present king, God sent Elijah. Ahab was the most wicked king Israel had up until then. He was the eighth king of Israel, about 70 years after Solomon died and the kingdom split. And this man married a pagan woman, married a lady named Jezebel, 
a foreign woman. He, it was against the law at that time. She established satanic worship, the worship of Baal as the national religion, and pretty much ran the country. She rebuilt, had, she had her husband rebuild him, but it was her design to rebuild Jericho. God told them to never do that. He did more to provoke the Lord than all the kings before. God sends Elijah to warn Ahab and then cares for him. Elijah announces that there will be no rain for several years. And that angered the king so greatly that Elijah runs and hides. God sends him to, to the Cherith ravine, feeds him through ravens. The brook dried up. He sent him to live with a widow in Zarephath which is where Jezebel's from. Her dad rules there. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to him, Ahab is searching everywhere for Elijah. Three years later, God sends Elijah back to Ahab and tells him it's going to rain. God sends Elijah to Ahab a second time, and he announced rain. By this time, Ahab is angry. He's desperate. But Elijah challenges the satanic prophets of Baal and Ashereth to a duel, to prove that the Lord is God. They both build altars and attempt to call down fire. The 850 or so prophets spend all day dancing, cutting themselves, and praying, if you will, to their idols. Well, it's Elijah's turn. They drew down no fire. Elijah said, okay, guys, back up. He took buckets of water. Not only did they take a bull to sacrifice, they drenched it in water. They drenched the altar with water. And then he prayed to God. And the Lord God answered. And you know what? Zap! The fire came down. God, God just lit it up. And everybody says, wow, the Lord, He is God. And then the story takes an interesting twist. And if you look over to 1 Kings 19, Jezebel threatens Elijah and he flees to Beersheba, and then to Horeb. And Beersheba, there was over, that's over 100 miles away, took about two weeks' journey to get there. It's the southernmost part of the kingdom. But in his distress, the Lord meets his needs, and he runs for another month. And God speaks to him in verse 9, What are you doing here? You know, in other words, why aren't you somewhere else? He said, and he even looked at, why are you hiding, Elijah? You know, verse 10 says he had some of the facts, and his interpretation of the facts that he had was wrong. Elijah's interpretation of the uncertainty around him left him afraid. Now, here was a man who called down the fire from heaven, stopped the rain, and he's running from Jezebel. You know, as we look, and God looked at Elijah's circumstances, we're thinking, what? After what you've just been through, Elijah? Hey, listen, man, you are in control. You have the upper hand. You have God on your side. And God implies, as I see it, you're in control. You have them right where you want them, Elijah. But as he looked at the very same circumstances, as I see it, Elijah says, I've done all I can do. As I see it, there is no hope. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. As I see it, I'm all alone again. How long this time am I going to be alone? And Elijah is saying, and as I see it, nothing's going to change. Now God tries to jog Elijah's memory and his perspective. Then God gave Elijah a not so gentle reminder of who he was and what he could and should do if he chose to do so. So he asked Elijah just one more time as if to say, in light of who I am and what I can do, Elijah, what are you going to do? And what are you doing here? But Elijah misses it. God informs Elijah of his plan. He's been working behind the scenes all along. Elijah is not alone. God has chosen the next king and the next prophet. They were in place. He preserved over 7,000 faithful people in Israel. Lord, you've been busy. And I can imagine Elijah, a month's journey away from where the action is, is thinking, when he finally came to himself, what am I doing here? Elijah had two problems. There were some things that he forgot about, and there were some things he didn't know about. You see, he forgot God's past faithfulness. He had a difficult time factoring in his future faithfulness. 
because he didn't know what was, going to, what was going to happen, what was going on. He assumed nothing was going on. Guys, when we lose sight of God's past faithfulness, we don't factor Him into the future either. And our fear can drive us to places we have no business, going relationally, financially, emotionally. And as we remember Him in our past, we will see Him in our future. You know why circumstances put us under the table emotionally and physically? We anticipate the future with no thought of God's faithfulness in the past or His activity behind the scenes. When the future is uncertain, remember, when looking ahead makes you fearful, look back. There's things you have forgotten. There are things you don't know about. And when we place the uncertainty of the future in the context of His faithfulness in the past and His promise of care in the future, we can experience rest. Guys, when I worship, I, I, I rehearse God's past faithfulness. I think back in detail over and over what God has done for me. And I feel unworthy of some of the blessings that He has given, of all of them. I haven't deserved any of them. But God's been good to me, faithful to me even when He shouldn't. But He loves us, and I want to encourage you, do not be fearful through this pandemic. It looks like we still don't even know if we're coming down to the end or what's going to happen. It's uncertain times. But hey, when that seatbelt light comes on, you know that God's still in control. You know that even though you may put your seatbelt on, we still know who's in control. So I want to encourage you right now, look back some of the blessings that God has blessed you with. If you've served God for any length of time, I know that you have blessings that could only be described as a God thing. Would you bow your heads with me? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this moment that we can stop and remember the blessings. And if there's those out there that may be listening that says, well, I, I don't know that I've ever really received a blessing from God. God, I truly believe that there's times that you move in ways that we would never understand. But God, I know that you bless your people, your people, those who call on your name, those who ask forgiveness of their sins, and those who believe on you as their personal Savior. God, touch everyone today. Let them be assured that when these uncertain times that we're going through, that God, when that, red, when that light comes on, that seatbelt light, that we stop and that we realize, you know what? God's done this for me. He's going to bring me through this as well. No matter what it looks like, no matter that it seems uncertain, no matter that I don't even know what the future is, I'm not going to be like Elijah. God, I'm going to trust you and believe you and not run from you, but to put my faith, my faithfulness in you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.